Today, I'd like to talk to you about setting up the Index Pulse on Mac 3. What do you use Index Pulse for? Two things. One is when you're screw cutting, it synchronizes the X travel with the rotation of the spindle. When you normally cut on a normal lathe, you have the motor, a gear train, lead screw, half nut, the carriage. So when the spindle turns, it goes through the gears and moves along the lead screw. Then on the actual lead screw, there's a chaser dial, and it's got numbers one two three four and so all what that is is a gear and as the lead screw rotates it indicates around and depending on the TPI or the pitch of the thread you're cutting it says right engage it one and you push the lever down and closes the half nuts grips the lead screw drags the carriage along synchronize with the spindle that's the mechanical way the electronic way is okay I'm spinning it this many revs and you got to move that fast okay now <laughs> now now, and that now is a signal pulse. It's like, okay, now, along we go. But then the other thing is that if you take a little cut, one thou cut, and the speed's okay. You take a two inch cut, and it goes, everyone bogs down. So what that means is that the speed is not in synchronization. It's not the same. So your picture of your thread might be big and small, big and small. On the mechanical ones, you'll snap the uh, lead screw or the pin and all that type of thing. The other thing is timing. So it gets the pulse and it says, all right, you started now. And it comes around, oh, you should be here. You should be here. Speed up. Oh, you're too fast. You're too slow. So it actually moves the carriage, the Z, at different rates to keep it in the same or the correct position. As these photos will Show. Mac 3 in, in the manual, and I'll just put the page up here, shows you the formula and it has to calculate the speed in milliseconds for it to realize that it's a signal. So those slots are usually quite large because the faster you go, the less time the slot is there, so the bigger it has to be. So you do all those calculations, and these, these photos will show. I made up a disc and a large slot for the index, but on Mac 3, you could have extra slots for the timing. So instead of just waiting for the index to come around once a rev, you can have more slots and you can then check with it where it's running out as it's going. So that's why one disc has got the large slot and the three small ones. And I used the photo interrupter and they're just machined up CD packet end covers, you know, the plain ones either in, just spray black. Then the other problem I have is, okay, you have the speed, but how fast are you going? So I then, all those years ago, you had a frequency meter. And what that does is it measures the frequency. Now the frequency is in hertz, and that, that, but that's per second. So if you have a chuck spinning around at 60 revs per minute, you would want your taco to say 60. If you have one, little sensor on it as it spins around it's one signal every second so the frequency meter will say ah oh, you do a one rev it is one frequency so you have to multiply that by 60 and on this other disc you'll see I had to move out 60 slots so that's just to get the tack out so it spins around it goes oh 60 60 60 60 and then the frequency meter would read 60 revs per minute what you want it so that's on the end of the lathe as you can see take up a lot of space and all that now with this new Nevin board I'm putting in, it says it can just pick up a small signal. So you can have just a Hall Effect sensor to pick up, which is great, which means I can get rid of that. Also now, these days, you can buy frequency meters that already have a divide by 60 chip in there, or even some of them have, if you've got uh, six slots on your lock nut or something, you just set it six or eight or 12, and it will divide it for you. So they're great. And now there's just other tacos, frequency meters, that will just measure rev per minute. They've got to divide by 60 chip inside. So that's what I've purchased here to replace the whole frequency meter, the 60 slot disc and the four slot disc with just one slot or one sensor and see how that goes. Also, part of this is to show you how to use the video arm that I mentioned in the previous video and also the stepper jig that I mentioned in the previous videos. This setup can do several things. One is testing the direction of your wiring on your 
motors get both going in the correct direction and all that sort of thing. Then uh, you can also check the speed. And this is the ATC motor. And rather than trying to do all the programming out in the shed in the middle of the night, wet and cold, hot or whatever, I can just do it in here and I can program and test and do all the groundwork, simple, easy, and make adjustments here. So that's what that setup is. The other thing too was to test whether the claims were correct. So that's what this setup is. You may have hopefully, both of you saw the video on the ATC index pulse and it uses a hall sensor module for the Adreno and this one uses a proximity hall effect switch and it comes with magnet. But it comes with a roughly a 10mm magnet which is great but when you're trying to mount that on a pulley or something it gets a bit bigger. So I actually purchased a series of magnets years ago, all different sizes. So that's what this setup here is. I've got a magnet, rare earth magnet, just on the grub screw that holds the pulley in and I wanted to set that up to see what was the smallest size magnet I could use and it turns out 3 mil is fine. With your proximity switches they have numbers in the code or most of them and there'll be a 12 and a 3 somewhere normally in the beginning and at the end. That's the diameters 12 millimeter 10 millimeter and the 3 is the gap sensing gap so that's 3 millimeter that M5 one I showed you uh, in the other video that was a 1 millimeter gap. So this come along it's M12 you get a kit and it had the 12 mil sensor and I wanted to check but then as it's a smaller magnet the distance is less also I need to know whereabouts in the center of the sensor it will pick it up hence I can move this arm around and adjust it to pick up the magnet. I just got the box of magnets, pulled them out, run underneath and had a look and I can see yeah, roughly in centre, smaller the magnet, the more it has to be in centre, the bigger one can be off centre. As you can see, I'll turn it over to the big one over here, that's it there, and it's hanging half over, and there it is. And the small one's just right there. So I know now, okay, if I want to put on the pulley, I just have to drill a three mil hole on the side of the pulley and put the magnet in there and Bob's your uncle. Or if I see a grub screw somewhere, I can just sit the magnet on that. So that's solved. With this rig, I can adjust it up and down, test and measure the distance. If you looked at my other videos where I've done the, ver the digital caliper, the vernier caliper mod where I show you how to remove the end, you can measure it without poking yourself in the eye and getting quite easily. So I can measure that, write that down and then I know when I measure up all the distances inside the cabinet I know how big to make the arm to hold the sensor and all that sort of thing. So that's just sitting here in the kitchen at my own time when there's nothing much on the idiot box and I can check that. I can then check the speed of the motor and you say yeah, well you know what difference does that make? Well when you're setting up your motor in Mac 3 you're doing the acceleration of velocity and all this sort of stuff and certain periods it doesn't have any effect. So you can adjust it so as you get your maximum revs and back it off a little bit and so as you can fine tune before you actually put it on the machine. So that's the, that's the other use for that as well. Now when I come to do the programming I will want to be able to find the position for the, the tools. So that needs to be fairly accurate. Now if you look at the light you can turn it slowly. and you try to find that with it on off but I found that sound adds to it as you know on I said on the automatic tool changer I'm putting on a buzzer so when it changes and LED flashing so as you, you know stand back is dangerous I'm just going to have that on the air cylinder when that's activated because if I had it on the pulley every time the pulley went around it would make that noise so that's just a sense now so but you, you can hook up a, a light a buzzer whatever you like now the other thing here is that all the instructions are in Chinese so you, you melt a few wires testing it up and drilling 0.5 of a volt we swing it across up to 11.5 I'm just running off a LiPo battery so we know that it's putting out the supply voltage which is good I think it's up to 30 odd volts that these things can switch with 8 to 30 something which means you got to make sure whatever's receiving the signal can accept that works fine now the next problem was okay I decided to hook up the meter at the back it's in Chinese but it has got, got five connections, three say uh, black, brown and blue, blue's in the middle. So immediately you can see it's running voltage.
But if you notice, the sensor is glowing, the buzzer is buzzing, and we've got 1.8 volts. When we come around, drops down to 1.8. Now if you're running a 5 volt system, 1.8 might be on all the time. So you may need to power your meter separate. So this is the benefit of doing the test. You could have tested that, said oh great, runs you know, perfect. Go out, put it on the machine, drill all your holes, cut all your wires up, then put your meter in, cut it all up, wire it up, and all of a sudden your buzzer's on all the time. Hey, what's going on? What have I done wrong? These are some of the traps. I just went out and got another battery connected to the meter. So the meter is separate, as you can hear. No buzzer. Buzzer. You need to have a separate supply to the meter and a separate supply to the sensor. Even though on the back of the meter it has blue, black and brown, do not connect those cables, just connect the black, the signal cable to your meter and run the power separately and it should work fine. So that means where you have the meter, you have to run three wires. Where you run your sensor, you have to run three wires. Then you have one of those wires has to join up with the other wire. So rather than just having your meter close to your sensor, you have to have extra wires. So, so you only need three. You can remove the two that you don't want. It's up to you. Working fine now. I'm happy with that and I can move on to the next stage. I can see in the monitor that it's flashing re reading across, but that's on zero. So here's the meter. I'll have to look at separate wiring, check the signal. If it is causes too much trouble, what I'll end up doing is just having a main one for the index, because that's the important one, and then use the speed either on the draw on Mac 3, or just hook up another power supply, tap in the signal and see if I get all this cross voltage. I did get 4.8 voltage earlier when I was testing, so it may vary, it may need to sit in, but these are some of the traps. But as you can see, the arm, and the jig, very, very useful. I only got two of these. Sometimes I wish I was an Indian goddess with eight and more. As you can see, that's how you work out your index signal. That's why you need it. That's some of the setup you can use, make your job a lot easier. And then as we continue on building this box up, I'll show you what else is there and what else to look for and what else to do. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe, spread the wisdom, tell your friends. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down. But let me know why. And as always, thanks for watching. <laughs>